Today, I'm here with my good friend, John Graves. And um, one of the best things about working in the field of data science is that you get to talk with such smart and interesting people. And, and John uh, definitely fits that category. <laughs> so uh, one thing I, I really appreciate about John is that he's such a smart and intelligent uh, person, but always so willing to share all of his experience and knowledge. Now, just to give you a little bit more background about John, uh, his little bio that I'm just going to uh, read out here so that to make sure that we get everything. So, uh, so John holds a PhD degree in computer science from AUT University and is the graduate of Singularity University in Mountain View, California. He's worked for high-profile financial organizations such as Morgan Stanley in New York City and Allianz Global Investor in San Diego. He's founded several startup companies in the U.S. and New Zealand. John regularly, regularly speaks at meetups and conferences on topics related to artificial intelligence. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. Really great to have you here today. I think you are going to be able to add a ton of value uh, to the people watching this. So could you actually tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you actually first got into data science? Yeah, sure. I, I was doing uh, data science yeah, before it had that name, I was working as a, a quantitative investment manager, what we call a quant on Wall Street. We used a, a statistical package, a SAS, to find patterns in the price and valuation of company stocks and would use those insights uh, to buy and sell the stocks in a way that managed the overall you know, risk and return of, of the pro portfolios. So um, I'd earn an MBA and, and I taught myself to code uh, mostly from books, since I was learning at a time when Stack Overflow, which is an online question and answer site for, for programmers, was just getting started. My first job as a quant was to uh, make sure that the systematic investment process, uh, managing about a $2 billion uh, portfolio, uh, didn't crash and burn on the, the 1st of January in the year 2000. So I was hired uh, over two decades ago now uh, to fix that Y2K bug wherever it occurred in you know, thousands of lines of SAS code. Nice. And um, so having a PhD degree and um, having done several nano degrees, actually, so I understand you have four different nano degrees in um, different fields related to data science. Uh, what would you say is the kind of key difference between uh, what you see in academia versus what you do in industry on a data science job? So yes, I, my, my PhD is in computer science and the, the four nano degrees are in AI, deep learning, deep reinforcement learning, and digital marketing. Uh, so I, I realized that after a, a getting a PhD in 2013 that my skills were going to become obsolete if I didn't kind of embark on this, you know, continuing education. And so this, these nano degrees have come along and made that, uh, you know, much easier uh, doing, doing the online learning. Basically, academic studies, it's helpful for giving you an appreciation of the theory behind the tools you use in the practice of data science. You know, what you do kind of on the job as a working data scientist is like flying an airplane. If you, you go for pilot training, you're going to learn about, you know, lift and drag, and, you know, how to make a flight plan, uh, how to communicate with a control tower. Uh, and then when you fly the plane, it, it's how you manipulate the controls and, and what you say on the radio that it's what matters. And the same, same idea applies to data science. The, the controls are the software tools that you have at your disposal and the, the presentations and visualizations you create, it's like your radio. So communicating your results is, is really quite an important part of the whole analytics process. Right. And um, uh, I'm just going to check in an like, extra little bonus question in here. Um, so if somebody hasn't gone off and say done a PhD and say four nano degrees or, or something like that, because obviously um, you've committed a huge amount of um, uh, time and dedication to studying these fields and topics. Do you really feel like they would be missing a lot or do you, do you think they would even be able to get 
into the field of data science? Well, like I said, I myself was effectively a, a self-taught data scientist at, at a time when you know you had to kind of piece the the knowledge together by by you know picking up by one book about uh, you know doing computer coding and then maybe a, a, a doing another study of, of the statistics involved, uh, some of which had been part of my MBA program. Today, the tools are remarkably easier to use than they once were. And, and so the learning curve is still pretty steep and, and there, there are more than one of them, let me put it that way. Uh, so you, you need to be prepared you know, to be learning about a variety of things and then kind of bringing all of that knowledge together to, to make yourself into a, uh, a data scientist, but it, it's the kind of thing, if you put you know, a solid six months into nothing but learning, you can go to zero to hero uh, in, a, in a remarkably short period of time. You know, there's some really interesting points there, actually. Like, like you mentioned, I think that um, computing and technology has, has changed so much. I mean, you've got languages like R and Python, uh, which in the greater scheme of things are actually really, really friendly. I mean, uh, you look back in the days where we had things like C++ um, and the amount of overhead and everything that you had to do to make those languages work are just uh, just really not that friendly, um, not that friendly at all. But on the flip side of things, you know, we have uh, a lot more different technologies that need to work together. Um, so, you know, um, I know we've talked about um, uh, all of the different uh, tools that we use in data science. It's not just, say, R and Python. It's all these supporting uh, tools as well and these different skills that you need to put together to really become uh, productive. And I, I know you did a recent talk about this at Auckland University. Um, so do you want to maybe talk a little bit about some of those different tools and that presentation that you gave? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my, my talk was framed as a, an addition to uh, what I considered an excellent blog post about the sort of main question of, of data science productivity by a guy named Owen Flanagan, who also spoke at the same conference. Uh, now, Owen pointed to tools like uh, SQL, the, the structured query language, you know, command line tools, uh, spreadsheets, text editors, using regular expressions, and, and suggested data scientists can be a lot more productive if they hone their skills with those tools along with knowing how to do research, how to write, and actually create tests for their code. So I took all of his in thoughts one, kind of one step further, suggesting we could use some of these tools of data scientists to gain insights into our own performance and productivity as data scientists, what I call metacognition, or thinking about the way we think and do our work. Now, some of the simple things to consider in this area are you know, keeping a journal of, of your activity so you can see you know when did you start and finish and so how long did it take for you to do certain things or using a what a simple thing called a keyboard macro recorder to speed up your interaction with the computer around routine tasks and and taking the idea of the sort of continual improvement of one's own skill very seriously the, the field is changing so fast the, the key skill is to have this ability and take the initiative to, to keep learning yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think that's uh, one of the things, if you're interested in this field, is is to actually really want to have that desire to keep on learning because all the stuff that's sort of relevant today is is going to change tomorrow. Um, I mean, it's it's shocking sometimes how often I uh, go away and, and find out, oh, there's a newer, better, faster way to do this and that. And um, actually, it brings me to another question, actually, is what are your thoughts on um, you know, like new technologies coming in uh, all the time. And, you know, how do you know when you should uh, jump on board and learn a new technology um, because it's the new latest and greatest thing and, and when you should just wait a little while because uh, it's not that refined yet and not really that easy to use or implement? So again, new, new technology does come along all the time and it's always been my practice to to take a look at it when it when it comes out, just to see if is it going to be something that's sort of game changing and it, and it gives us some capability that we simply never had before. Is it something that's simple to integrate into your current workflow or process, or does it require sort of rebuilding everything? And 
And so there's, there are quite a number of considerations that come into play there. Uh, you know, if, uh, if it's working, you know, don't fix it, you know, is, is, is one kind of conservative uh, rule of, of thumb. Uh, so you, you do have to be uh, a little bit conservative sometimes and, and realize that, it, you know, it's not the end of the world if you're, you're, you're using something that is uh, ultimately kind of a legacy code or tools. Uh, they, they will eventually be made, you know, obsolete. Uh, but so long as you're kind of, you've got that radar out there looking for, you know, what's, what's coming on the, on the horizon. Uh, and, and again, the, that willingness to learn and adapt to, to, um, to the, the changing uh, systems, uh, you'll be, you'll be all set. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I, I guess, um, you know, these days, you know, when different technologies like uh, Hadoop and TensorFlow came out, I mean, they're, obviously received a lot of press there are conferences around them um can new latest greatest uh most wonderful thing um but i, I think that uh, at the same time um i think few people uh, appreciate that uh, when they came out uh, when they first came out they were really really difficult to use like i mean uh, when hadoop came out you really really had to had have strong software development skills in Java and all this kind of stuff like that. It wasn't built for uh, data scientists and analysts as such. Um, and it hasn't uh, been until sort of the very kind of new iterations of things where um, you are effectively using SQL on top of it, using stuff like AWS Athena and, and, and those kind of things, um, which means, you know, if you've got a little bit of experience in databases, then all of a sudden, wow, now you can, uh, uh, drive Hadoop without having to become like a full software engineer. Exactly. So, you know, uh, I think there's, um, there's definitely a, a kind of a, it's really good to be aware, um, but there's a, I think a right time to jump on technology. And I think you've made some really good points as well. So um, I guess the next question then is, is that, you know, these days we have uh, a lot of coverage about data science and AI and everything uh, in the media. And, you know, what would you say, you know, or would you say there's any kind of common misconceptions you think that people get uh, from all this coverage that we're getting at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. We've entered what, what's called the augmented age now. You know, artificial intelligence, it's not bringing the Terminator to kill or replace us. It's Instead, our minds are getting that sort of same kind of power boost that our bodies got during the industrial age. So mm -hmm. basically, whatever kind of thinking or creating we've been able to do in the past, we're just going to be able to do more of it and, and better. So I'm a real techno optimist. Yeah, no, absolutely. The technology is, is really pretty incredible. It is uh, it's very, very exciting. Um, I think with a lot of the new technology that we have now with deep learning and everything like that, it basically enables us to automate a whole bunch of things that we couldn't automate before, right? Because stuff used to be, um, I don't know if the right word for it, but almost like a little bit too digital or something, right? I mean, or too, too kind of binary is, is maybe a better way of putting it. So, um, you know, I, I think that. Um, you know, the, the technology, uh, I mean, actually the technology is already incredible. Probably one of the, the key things limiting it, if anything, I think, is actually the, the quality and, you know, the quality of uh, data and data which has been sufficiently categorized and labeled and everything like that, I think is, is probably uh, one of the biggest obstacles to actually getting a lot of projects done. So. There's certainly a lot of data out there. Every time you, you make a, a phone call, send a text message, um, click on a website, you know, the Internet of Things is coming along. Uh, you're, you're, you're using your uh, apps to you know, buy your food, order your Uber. Uh, I, I even manage my electricity uh, supply through, a, through an app. So you're uh, you're going to find that um, there's there's data these days about just about everything in the world and and all of that data needs needs some kind of analysis and hence the demand and increasing demand for for a data scientist 
Yeah, no, it is, it is pretty incredible. Uh, as you mentioned, with the number of devices that we have today, um, IoT devices, just the logging that we have on our different systems, because everything is uh, digital, uh, there is this huge uh, trail of already pre-digitized information. Um, and I think, that's, uh, I think that's really key. And I think being, like if you are an organization or something, being really uh, strategic about the actual information that you're collecting through these different sources and how they can be joined together and all those kind of things um, can really make the, the difference to whether you're able to capitalize on those uh, data assets or not. Agreed. So what would, you, uh, what would be your best advice for somebody who is wanting to get into the, um, the field of data science? Right. Uh, data science, well, it can be a really super rewarding career choice, but I'd say only go for it if you kind of enjoy this constant challenge of unsolved puzzles. Like, you know, do you like Sudoku? Or if not, then, then maybe try a, a slightly different role like a business analyst. And, and once you, you know you, you kind of like working with data to generate insights, uh, you know, spreadsheets are definitely like the quickest and easiest way to start. And, and you work with some data that you, you know, personally care about, like your own expenses. You know, how much of your income goes to your rent or your groceries or to entertainment. Uh, if you're already working with business data using tools like Excel, it's, it's time to begin learning about writing some computer code because that's the way we automate sort of more of the analytic process. You're replacing those many manual steps required by a spreadsheet with a, a script of actions that we can simply run. Now, if, if you're coming from a technical side, such as a software developer, and you already have computing or coding skills, you, you need to pick up an understanding of like basic statistics. And I'll keep in mind that you know, data science is this sort of sweet spot where the coding statistics and, and business knowledge all overlap. And, and that's why the, the jobs pay so well. You need to have this combination of skills to be successful. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, as you mentioned, it is this kind of sweet spot. And I, I would see like a lot of people coming in from all of these different angles. And there's, there's always so much to learn, I, I find, uh, from like all of these different fields. Like, as you mentioned, a software engineer, uh, they, have a, they have a ton of skills uh, to building better solutions since, you know, the solutions that we develop are effectively uh, a type of piece of software. And so there's incredible uh, there's really good practices around that like uh, unit testing continuous integration and all of these practices that software developers uh, know very well but uh, maybe a, an analyst or a statistician and doesn't know those things right and so there's a real value in being able to learn or at, at the very least appreciate uh, some of those skills because that's going to help you become uh, better at your task or at least managing uh, your teams um, to kind of push them in the right direction because you know that at a, there's, um, there's this spectrum of skills and as you progress and as the complexity of the solutions progress, you really need a way to effectively manage that complexity before it kind of gets out of control. Excel spreadsheets, uh, fantastic for a sort of certain use case and, and for a period of time, but when you start building those out into like really complicated solutions, then actually maybe at least consider that there might be some better solutions, uh, some better solutions for that. Any other advice that you'd like to uh, give to people? Just keep learning. And I think uh, taking advantage of, uh, you know, the, the data pro courses is, is an ideal way for uh, most sort of uh, aspiring data scientists to, to get acquainted with, uh, you know, some of the terminology, some of the tools, and, and, and set you on the road to having a successful data science career. For anybody who would be interested in getting a little bit more guidance for these kind of things, um, having someone like uh, John and myself walk through uh, s certain examples, using all these different technologies, using um, and working through some sort of project, then there'll be some links in the description below uh, that you can go and click on if you want to check them out. Really excited to be helpful. Awesome. So yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for your time, John. And uh, we'll catch up. Uh, we'll catch up again soon.
All right, cheers.